Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High and today I'm reviewing Module 8 from the Universe to the Atom and in particular I'm going to be reviewing the fifth inquiry question which looks at deep inside the atom. Now, a quick reminder, anything that I produce here will actually be available in a printable version, so you can access that via the link in the description below. Now, Module 8 is called From the Universe to the Atom. Now, the module is divided up into five key inquiry questions, and those inquiry questions really ask some important questions about our understanding of the elements. And in particular, as we look at the inquiry questions, we see or our understanding of science develops as we build models based on evidence. So the first inquiry question asks the question, what evidence is there for the origin of the elements? The second inquiry question asks, how is it known that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons? In essence, we're dealing with the atomic structure. The third inquiry question asks, how is it known that classical physics cannot explain the structure of the atom? So we're really addressing the quantum mechanical model. The fourth inquiry question digs deeper and asks, how can the energy of the nucleus be harnessed? So I'm just gonna simplify it by just writing the nucleus. And going deeper still, the last inquiry question says, how is it known that our human understanding of matter is incomplete? And throughout these questions, starting from the origins to the further exploration, going deeper and deeper to our understanding of matter, what we also cover as we do these inquiry questions, we examine how over a period of about 150 years, that evidence resulted in the development of models and those models were challenged and revised and thrown out as more evidence came in. And so that process is an important process to also appreciate in this particular module. So now we get to our last inquiry question. We started off with the origins of the elements and learned through a series of experiments, the model of the atom shifted from an indivisible particle to something that was made up of smaller particles, namely protons, neutrons, electrons. We learned that those particles weren't necessarily just simply explained through a classical means that our electrons themselves are having wave-like properties. We explored deeper into the nucleus and looked at the energy of the interactions between the protons and neutrons within the nucleus. But unfortunately, that model had limitations. Through the 1930s and 40s and 50s came an explosion of particles discovered in particle accelerators that could not be explained by this particular model. That leads us to a newer model of the atom. And that leads us to now what we refer to as the standard model. And the standard model is our current model that accepts to explain the structure of the atom. And so in this particular part of the inquiry question, you need to be aware what the standard model actually represents. That is really the, the, how particles are basically made up of fundamental particles called leptons and fermions. And the force that exists between them can be explained by things that we refer to as bosons. And so this standard model is a culmination of all the work that led up to previously. Now, in fact, in my teaching, I actually teach this first so that students can understand this is the current model that we have. And then we look at the historical development that led to this particular model. But apart from just looking at the standard model and what that model actually entails, we also look at the evidence of that. And when I say evidence, in particular, I'm looking at particle accelerators. Now, particle accelerators are basically devices that speed up charged particles by the means of using electric fields and magnetic fields to manipulate these particles to extremely high speeds, close to the speed of light, and then interact them with other elements in order to have a better understanding of the fundamental nature of matter. Now, some of those particle accelerators are most likely well known to you. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN is a good example of a synchrotron. There's also the Fermilab accelerator that, uh, that exists in Chicago. But there are others as well, such as SLAC, which is the Stanford Linear Accelerator in Stanford in California. And then there's also LINAX, which are linear accelerators that exist at various institutions around the world. All in essence do the same thing. 
by manipulating charged particles through electric fields and magnetic fields and causing them to interact, we could have a better understanding of the fundamental nature of the matter and also measure them with great precision. So for example, particle accelerators such as LHC or the Large Hadron Collider at CERN was able to show the existence of the Higgs boson. Then we also have SLAC, who was able to accelerate electrons at high speeds to actually show that protons can actually be described as made up of smaller particles. In other words, the model of the quark, which was developed in the standard model, was verified by the experiment at SLAC. And so I want to leave you with one key tip here. In this module, there's lots of content, but understand the big picture. The big picture is, is our understanding of elements, in particular, our understanding of the atom has changed. How? Because we have experiments that developed models of our atoms. Those models therefore had predictions of how it should behave. And those predictions were tested with further experiments. As a result, those models were either thrown out, as we've seen in previous inquiry questions, or modified, which we've also seen in other inquiry questions. And so we had this process of science where models were made, tested, modified, and changed, and new models developed through the course of 150 years. This is not the final story. This is still a model that is currently, even today, being tested to see if that is the right model. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.